This is among the five or six most important videos that I've ever done out of well over a thousand videos in 16, 17 months that I've been doing this. I'm going to ask you to suspend your normal viewpoints. I want you to watch it very seriously, and I want you to put on your thinking cap. I want you to get rid of the preconceived notions, listen carefully to the argument, assess the possible ramifications, which I think are huge, and then respond in the comments below. You're probably going to want to listen to the end because the argument, you know, it has pieces and parts. And if you want to be able to get the whole idea, it's probably going to mean you have to listen to the entire thing. All right. In mid-2023, okay, take you back to mid-2023, July, August. Tesla sales were electrifying, still on pace to accomplish the 50% year-on-year average increase that Elon had promised back in 2019, I think. This is a bit of a trim. There was a bit of trim on the sales, but pretty much everyone assumed 1.9 to 2 million vehicles for 2023 and another great year in 2024, maybe 2.6 million or more. There's plenty of capacity, and it was easy enough to put up more walls and build more, like, I don't know, Gigamax, or possibly India, or possibly something. Anyway, you know the story. You've been watching it. You've been paying attention. But then something happened. In the second half, the reality started to settle in. This is the second half of 2023. Remember back, all of a sudden. The 2 million became impossible. 1.95 seemed, yeah, slowly but surely things were going away. But what happened? Well, on August 31st, okay, August 31st, CarWow did a video. What was the video about? The new Model 3 Highland. That video now has 2.5 million views. You probably saw it. Some say that the Model 3 Highland is the car that the Model 3 should have been. There was instantaneous praise from everywhere about this new car. There was so many videos done about it by professionals, and there was hardly anything negative said. It was 100% across the board, everybody screaming its praises. But then, wait, it was only going to be available in China, not in the U.S. In fact, Serious production of the Model 3 Highland didn't start in the U.S. until a month ago. January, February, March, very, very small numbers. Finally, we're starting to get some numbers just in the last month. Oh, and then no similar refresh for the Model Y. I didn't care. I don't think you cared about the body style refresh. For the Model Y, it was the suspension, the rear camera, the rear seat camera. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, video, uh, screen and other creature comforts that were so much better in this new Model 3 Highland. These are the things that people would want on their new Model Y, but these weren't added. They still aren't. And we're not going to see the Model, the Juniper until probably early 2025 at the earliest. Well, then on November 30th, CarWow did their first review of the Cybertruck. That was November 30th. And that video now has 4 million views. Those who had been on waiting lists for four years were now seeing the best car Tesla or anyone else has ever made. The breakthroughs in technology were just awe-inspiring. They were so awe-inspiring that, again, video after video after video was made of the incredible things that were done in this vehicle, making it the best car ever made. That's what Elon said, the best car they'd ever made. Well, by the end of the year, the writing was on the wall. By the end of January, the stock was plummeting. Sales were abysmal, and there was no expectation that anything was going to happen to create some kind of miracle by the end of the year. Wait until 2025, they said, and the Generation 3 vehicle. Never mind that you have to sell three Generation 3 vehicles to make up for one sale of a Cybertruck in profit. Well, I was talking about this all in January, February, March. I put out the Osborne idea regarding the Model 3 last year. 
as the delay for the U.S. was announced. I said, this is going to have an Osborne effect. People are going to stop buying the Model 3. I put it out again regarding the Model Y when there was no evidence of the Juniper coming anytime soon. I talked about it over and over and over again in the first three months of this year. Go back and watch my videos. But it got no traction. Oh, no, yeah, that's not, that, yeah, nobody was, nobody was thinking that was what was going on. We kept hearing about Elon Musk tweets. That's what was the problem. Oh, it was his compensation plan overhang. Oh, it was interest rates. Oh, and then there was the horrible economy that, oh, yeah, never happened. So then I started asking about a possible Osborne situation with regard to the Cybertruck earlier this week. Blank stares. This was a breakthrough in my thinking. I was shocked when I had the idea. I was like, how come nobody thought of this before? Even in the video this morning, many comments were, oh, no, I don't think it's an Osborne effect from the Cybertruck because, it, you know, the Cybertruck's really a niche product. You're really wrong, Randy. And I'm not mocking you guys. I want you to really think it through because it is not a niche product. I did a poll. Sure, I'm a small player on X. I don't know, 55,000 or 6,000 people follow me over there. So I have only gotten 137 views. I'm, I'm sorry, 137 people to participate in the poll, like a thousand views, which is not bad for my size account. But the results should shock you and encourage you. 40% said they would buy a Model Y if there was no such thing as a Cybertruck. That's massive. 33% said the same thing about a Model th a 3. If there was no such thing as a Cybertruck, they would be buying a Model 3 right now. Oh, yeah. 20% <laughs> said they would be buying a Model X if there was no such thing as a Cybertruck. They're willing to wait for their Cybertruck rather than buy a Model Y, 3, or X. And then I had people write in that no, they were they would be buying a Model S right now if it wasn't for the Cybertruck. And then I had a category down there for I would be buying another car out, not a Tesla. Not, you know, if there was no Cybertruck, I'd be buying something else that wasn't a Tesla. Do you know that was under 10%? <laughs> so these are Tesla buyers. These are people that want to be part of the future. They want to be part of the Tesla ecosystem. They want to buy a Tesla. But now that there's a Cybertruck, the other cars are off the table. They're not going to happen. And it's not because it's a great work truck or because it's a great off-road truck. It's because it's a great car. <laughs> Folks, the Cybertruck is the best vehicle ever made. Every aspect of the product is maxed out, including the wow factor and the social points factor, everything. So it isn't a niche product. It's a car that happens to be shaped more like a truck. But it drives better than a car. It's more comfortable than a car, has a better speaker system than any car, Need I go on? <laughs> it's not a niche product. Oh, yeah. It can also, too, work like a truck. It can also go off-road really well. Those are just extra special nice benefits. It's a car. So I'm estimating that the combination of the folks waiting for Juniper and the folks waiting for Cybertruck has cost Tesla a minimum of 500,000 vehicle sales in 2024. I think it cost them sales maybe another hundred or 200,000 in 2023. Not just in the US, but around the world. And it might be more. The timing of how this all happened, of when Tesla sales started to go down, the timing is just too clear. And the polling, even if it's a small sample, the polling is way too clear. Now, with all that the data that Tesla has, did Elon know this in January or even earlier? Is this why we had no estimate for car sales in 2024 at the at the uh, January meeting? I mean, what can you do about it? You could have done you could have done the Juniper faster. Oh yeah, I suggested that multiple times in this space during January, February, March. I kept on saying, why don't they bring out the Juniper faster? Can't you make these changes faster? I asked Jeff uh, uh, Jeff Lutz. Wouldn't it be okay? Couldn't they make the suspension change and put that rear, that, uh, 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 what do you call it? <laughs> put the screen in the back and all these little small changes in the Model Y, couldn't they do that now? And yeah, I, he thought they could. But other than that, 
Once the cat is out of the bag on Cybertruck, how do you fix the Osborne? You can't. So the good news is that next year, Cybertruck will really be rolling out big numbers. It appears that we'll see even exports. We will have a the 2.5 product, the new generation car, whatever it's going to look like, whatever the configuration is going to be. And we will have a cyber cab of some kind that doesn't have a steering wheel, et cetera. And we'll have, uh, maybe we'll have the Juniper that you know could happen as well. Um, that we might even someday have a Roadster. So all these things will be popping out in 25. It's going to be extremely exciting. Um, but I'm just so happy that this theory of mine, which I think you're going to agree with, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I want this theory to get out there big time because I it's going to explain why the sales are down instead of the crazy theories, theories that EVs were slowing down due to, you know, Tesla being in a world of herd over Elon Musk or the product line was aging or all the nonsense that people have been saying. So it's your turn. Let me have it in the comments below. It's been great talking to you.